credit to the marketing people for the apocalyptic film 2012. The first trailer for the movie featured an epic scene, the entire Himalayan mountain range, the world's tallest peaks, flooded by massive ocean waves that swallow them whole, and then the trailer cuts to the movie's billboard. 2012, find out the truth. Google search, 2012. In our number one story, people followed those instructions, and when they Googled 2012, besides the, besides the movie website, they got web-spun crazy theories about Mayan calendars and galactic alignment that predicted the end of days in the year 2012. Tonight, as the movie opens, the viral marketing campaign has actually forced NASA to respond to those inane theories. In a moment... Theoretical physicist Michiao Kaku on the 2012 phenomenon. First, once again, here's Tom Costello. You gotta hand it to Hollywood. If they waited until 2012 to release a movie about the world ending in 2012, there wouldn't be much time to cash in on the DVD sales. When they tell you not to panic, that's when you run! So instead, 2012 is premiering in 2009, tonight, loaded with jaw-dropping special effects, lots of meteor strikes, cascading highways, tidal waves, cities sliding into the ocean, bad stuff. It's not just California. It's the whole world. The victims adhere to the Mayan calendar, which predicts that the end of time will coincide with a planetary alignment on the 21st of December of Well, kind of. Under the Mayan calendar, today's date, November 13th, 2009, is written as 12 19 16 15 6. And on December 21st, 2012, the Mayan date will be 13 0 0 0 0. That's the end of the Mayan calendar, and that means we're all in trouble. Except it doesn't really. The normal thing in the Maya calendar after you end a cycle is another cycle begins. And if you were going to talk to the ancient Maya, that's what they'd say. This isn't the end of time. We're just starting another cycle. Yeah, but there aren't many ancient Mayans around anymore. Still, one of NASA's chief scientists says, don't worry, the Earth's got a pretty good track record. The last colossal event that affected the history of life on Earth was 65 million years ago. Senses are failing all over the park. Although that didn't end so well for the dinosaurs. And then they took their revenge in Jurassic Park. Which just goes to show this stuff never gets old. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Dr. Michiao Kaku is a theoretical physicist, author of the bestseller Physics of the Impossible, and host of the upcoming series called Sci-Fi Science, airing December 1st on the Science Channel. Doctor, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Okay, yes or no, the history of the planet Earth ends in 2012. No, and don't quit your day job. Don't sell the furniture. You may be homeless in 2013. Now, you have seen the movie, and I don't want you to spoil anything, or actually spoil whatever you want. Uh, give us an idea of how much destruction is in this thing, and what, if any of it, is possible. This movie is the mother of all shake-and-bake movies. It has that wow factor. India is submerged. A mile-high tidal wave devastates Washington, D.C., and it all starts because the Earth is aligned with the sun toward the center of the galaxy. One problem, that happens every December. And hey, we're still here, aren't we? <laughs> every December. That's right. All right, now NASA was worried enough about this uh, movie that they've actually uh, tried to push back and debunk it. Has, has NASA, has, has a movie ever pushed NASA this far that they feel they have to get the word out that don't worry, the world's not gonna end? I think this is the first time that NASA has been overwhelmed with thousands of emails in a contest between Hollywood and NASA. It's no contest. Hollywood has the best PR people, the best special effects people, and hey, NASA ought to get its PR up to speed as well. NASA was caught with his pants now, down. Uh, one theory, I mean, I mean fantasy, that's uh, in this movie is that a rogue planet will bombard Earth and destroy us in 2012. NASA says that that's not going to happen. How do they know that's not going to happen? Why couldn't something come from out of nowhere and destroy us? 
Well, first of all, the Mayan calendar ends in 2012 and was meant to be celebration, a new cycle emerging, and it makes no mention of Planet X. Planet X is supposed to be way out there beyond Pluto, but we've scanned everything outside Pluto. All we see are pieces of ice and debris. So Planet X is not coming. Well, now let's get to water on the moon. Uh, what is the significance of discovering uh, gallons and gallons of water on the moon? This is big, real big, because water, ice, is worth more than gold on the moon. To put a pound of anything on the moon costs about $50,000. That's five times the weight in gold. With water, you can extract hydrogen for rocket fuel, oxygen for breathing, and it's also good as a shield against cosmic rays and solar flares. This is a no-brainer. I mean... Uh, and NASA really scored the jackpot here. But how much, I mean, the things you're talking about require a lot of water, don't they? I mean, how much water do they have to discover to make those kinds of processes viable on the moon? Well, 24 gallons out of one football field doesn't seem like much. But realize that that 24 gallons of water is worth more than gold on the moon. We could shave literally millions, hundreds of millions of dollars right off the top of the space program. And remember, it's cost. Cost is the reason why Obama is thinking of scaling back the space program. If we find water on the moon, water that does not have to be carried to the moon at $50,000 per pound, hey, that's a game changer. Dr. Michio Kaku, author, physicist, and TV host, thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure.